going. And we're live. Okay. Um, hello, everyone, who is now like tuning in, filtering in, uh, seeing this being live on your home screens. Uh, welcome to the God knows how many live shows we've done now <laughs> of 21st. the late night book. 20, 20, how much? 21st, I think. Welcome I think, to the 21st, the adult life. <laughs> Our live shows can finally drink in the United yeah. States, and that is awesome. <laughs> um, in the UK, it's already been drinking for three years. <laughs> um, uh, I hope everyone's doing very well. Uh, last month, in the month of May, we read Paranessi by Susanna Clark. Um, some of you who might have already known Susanna Clark wrote Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Uh, she also won the Women's Fiction Prize for this book last year. And so it was definitely a interesting selection. And, you know, just for the sake of me matching everyone else, um, <laughs> like just... Your your copy is still better though because it doesn't yeah. have this weird end strip weird like at the end. Thank you. My I basically forced my boyfriend to pick this up, and so he picked up the paperback book. And so yeah, I was just like, thank you for giving me <laughs> another prop to use today. Um, but yeah, uh, I want everyone to leave their like star ratings in the. I was gonna say comment section, but in the live chat whilst uh, we just have this moment going on oh. para nasi um but good. yeah i think we can just delve straight on in with the non-spoilery thoughts as we discuss the house um the year the albatross came to the uh, <laughs> south what is it like the southwestern halls i think you i think you might you might break so, yes, yeah, southwestern halls. southwestern halls. oh, oh. <laughs> um <laughs> Okay, so Noelle, go first. Well, can I, can I ask about your hardcover? Is there any other cool, like, um, details? Are there pages? Oh, of course. Cute. <laughs> it's giving um, me starless nice. sea feelings. I think it's I also, to... like, a weird shape. It's, like, more square than, like, a regular hardcover. Which As it deserves. I think it's quite interesting. Um, Wait, does the front say Nessie? <laughs> Yes, Nessie, because it's like para. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it kind of like opens out to like that. I love it. Wow. So good. Cool. Okay. Right. I guess I'll go. Cool. Okay. Go, Noelle. Well. So when I saw the cover and I just had a general vague guess of what this book was about, I was like, I think it might be mythology right? It might fit into like Greek myth or something. And I think that's kind of like what I kept pitching in my videos. I was like, I think it's Greek myth. And I was like, so excited for it. Uh, clearly hadn't read the fucking back because I would know very quickly that that was not what was going on. And so within the first 20 pages, I was like, oh, I'm not going to like this. This is too weird. It's too wild. I was like, this is not my journey. It's not mm. my genre. So I went back. I reread the first 20 pages because I was lost. I was like, how does this have anything to do with the Trojan War? I'm lost. Obviously, I had no idea what was going on. Where's Athena when you meet her? <laughs> I was like, this dude on this column, it must happen. So I go back and I reread. Eventually, I loosen my grip on what I thought this book was supposed to be. And then I loved it. So I would give this book... I think on first reading, four out of five, because there are still gray areas for me, still things I need to work out as a reader, still things I need to go back. And I feel like it's it's definitely one of those books, like a lot of like horror movies where you know you're missing something. And once you go back, you start catching all the clues. So mm -hmm. I think on second reading, it'll be even better to me, but phenomenal first reading, definitely confusing, but I am... I've been intrigued with labyrinths for a while, especially after reading Ariadne, which like talks about the, la la lab the labyrinth and the Minotaur. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. was intrigued the entire time. And this kind of blending of labyrinth to real world and crime was so cool. So <laughs> that's it. That's, I love that. that's the Greek myth, Piranesi. 
Amazing. Okay. All right. I guess it's my turn. Well. <laughs> 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 you guys, what did you guys? What are your predictions? Do you think I love it? Do you think I love oh, it? okay. Let's Middle predict. Man? I um, think he'll love it, but he'll have one or two issues with it. Okay, exactly. You're absolutely fucking wrong. I have no issues with it. This is hundred percent perfection. I okay. I love this book. It was like immediately in the yes. beginning. I agree with. Greek mythology or retelling in some like shape or way or format and mm -hmm. when I didn't get that I was like in for a surprise um, so like like you know well, <laughs> I have to go back and I did reread like <laughs> the first 10 pages or so as well and um, I didn't have like the sticky tabs so I just like dogged ear like a bunch of pages in here because it was so there were so many her writing is so good mm -hmm. I, feel, I thought this book was like utterly captivating it feels like a fever dream a fever dream like something yes. akin to like your ghost watching in uh, or looking in into like this whole story. And it has like this presence, this whole presence of like this, this like listless, like feeling. You don't know where mm -hmm. you are. You don't know how you got there or why you're there, but it doesn't matter because, you know, that part doesn't matter. And I feel like at this core, this book is largely about like loneliness, trauma and solitude and the absence of identity. And it was so beautiful to read those certain aspects of how like grief mm -hmm. mixed in all together and everything. And it does quite, it does um, get quite like uh, philosophical at some point, but it's like super easy to understand. Mm -hmm. Like the whole thing was just really beautiful and tricky, but it has like a certain you know charm to it. Like it's yeah. just metaphorically dizzy, I think. So really fucking loved it. I think I found like a new favorite of the year, you know? Thanks to the book club. Thanks to you guys. I always find new favorites. <laughs> like every year. last year was like Song of Achilles, right? Yeah. And I would have sure. not picked that book up because for whatever reason. And same thing here. I think I would not have picked this one up for like the longest time if it weren't for the book club. So 10 out of 10 for me. Oh, I this was, love this it. was this was mm. fucking perfect. I love the story, the characters, everything about it. So what would you rate it? Wow, you already know I love it because I talk so much. <laughs> Hello, in, in the in the Requiem book, we're like, uh, that's <laughs> I don't even know. I, lo I love I love how you know you didn't like it because you got the title wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? It's reprieve. <laughs> reprieve. What did I say? Re Requiem. <laughs> Requiem. That is the two. That, those polar opposites. <laughs> uh, it's already. Oh, it's been less than a month. And you're like, don't know her. <laughs> don't know. Who is she? Yes. Um, I'm really glad that we all are in agreement about this book. Because I, when I first read it, I was like exactly the same. Like the first kind of like 10, 20, like 30 pages were very much like hard and trawling to get through. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. Like, ooh. So I went back, reread it. And then the more I read into it, the more immersed I became within like the world and Perinesi's journey and everything to do with uh, the unraveling of the mystery that's going on in the house. And I don't know, there was just something about like the way that Perinesi has this kind of like religious relationship with the house, the way that he like worships the house as like this god, like- So cute. Ancient. It's so cute, and then it's also like, oh, when you like when the great mysteries revealed, you're kind of like, oh, oh no, yeah. Um, and yeah, I just it was mesmerizing. And then on a second reread, I think I just like Noel said, I just noticed a lot more things that like led to like what we eventually get, and it just only added to the appreciation that I have. Mm -hmm. And then from like the skimming that I did for the book club, um, yeah, it was it just reminded me of the love that I had for this. Um, I think I'm probably gonna do like a mm, I don't know what star rating I would do um for this book because I think right now it's sort of no no less than a five. Easy. <laughs> no, oh, wow, guys. I think I will I think I will put it up to a five to be fair now. Because it's kind of like the more that I read this book, the more that I can like just envision like things I can do with this book and take from this book. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it has been like it is like amazing. And it has led me to want to read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. But like Lisa says, it is so thick. Um the paperback copy is like a thousand pages. What? <gasps> Yeah, what? I'm looking yeah. it up right now. I need to look at this cover. It, I, I have to read it. 
I have to read it anyway because it's a comp title for the, the my the book that I'm writing. But I'm like, um, yeah, I'm. It's oh. it's it's like a thick book, but it's about magicians in England, and I really want to read it. So, mm. <laughs> ooh, you know, not gonna lie though, I did, I did prefer the first part of the book to the second to the latter half of the book for me personally. Oh. Ooh. Um, I guess we can talk mm. spoilers now. So if you haven't read this book yet. That's true. We all t- we all like to We all three of us pretty much sold it to you. You know, high ratings. We all <laughs> loved it. Bye. <laughs> okay. Brutal. <laughs> but yes, if you don't care about spoilers, you can stay. But also you probably should leave. No, you should the, leave the, and read the, but the book. twist. The twist the twist that we get is like unlike um everything. Uh, so yeah, I would highly recommend you just read this before reading, like listening to us discuss like the major things of this book. But yeah, OMG, we... Isabella, no, what are you doing? <laughs> you need to go leave and read this book, okay? <laughs> I'm done. Oh, okay, right. Um, so I guess let's just dive right into like the major thing of this book. So Matthew Rose Sorensen. <laughs> How did we all react? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I, someone said it in the chat. I, I've i lost it now, but, oh yeah. So Haley said it. I don't think I've read from the POV of such a compelling, authentic, and intimate main character. I felt this way. Right away, mm-hmm. the first 10 pages, I was so confused that I was like, I don't even know like who the narrator is, what's going on. I just don't understand. And as it continued, I just wanted to protect him at all costs. I loved Piranesi. I thought he was so childlike in his, like, love of the world and just, like, how excited he was to be alive. Like, he wasn't... Mm -hmm. I felt like he was lonely, but he was also so grateful to just had to be in the world to be in the house. He was just so excited and he was such a... Like, he even calls himself, like, I'm an... I'm a scientist. Yes. But he's like, Mm -hmm. I'm a scientist and a explorer or something so he you know and the fact that he's like no like we shouldn't we shouldn't be trying to get something out of the house the house is what we should be getting that's all like we Mm -hmm. should just be grateful to even be here and i just loved him he was so kind and even when you can tell that the other is being an asshole he's still like all right bye have a good day and he's just like i know we're so sweet goodbye goodbye (laughs) Bye. Yes. So, but he wasn't like to me. His childlikeness wasn't like grating or irritating. I really felt like such a connection to him, and I felt such an appreciation for how optimistic and kind he was. And it was, I really liked Paranesi. So, yeah, um, but like following following with you upon that, I think there was sort of like there was a huge reason to you know why he was the way he was um i think later in the book in order for you know normal people mundane people to get into this place into like this new like the pocket of dimension it was like they had to revert back into this sort of um childhood like memory right the subconscious of theirs and like where they believe like anything could happen it was almost like a peter pan-esque vibe you know where Mm. You know, a child's imagination is one of the most powerful things because they believed in so many things, right? And so I feel like when he got to this place, it sort of, he sort of tucked back into himself and that personality sort of like came in and protected him, that, you know, that childlike personality protecting this, however however old this man was, right? And I thought, I thought that was such sort of like a beautiful thing in Mm -hmm. itself. And you know, he's like the heart of the story, and we're just like really gazing in on his like adventures of him trying to visit like this these broken places. And he was also really creative. I could never, instead of like naming a year by itself, like 2021 or 2019, mm-hmm. and he would go off and give it a name like the coral room with the weeping statues by the 45th vestibule on the third yeah. floor by the broken stairs on the east wing or something, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, it was just. It was just overall, like, I overall really, really loved him. I mean, even though his name was given to him by the other, like, in sort of, like, a mocking sort of way, um, I still think it's a very, very fitting name, you know? So mm. It's kind of like he almost just takes ownership of that name and makes it into something a lot, like, of himself. And, like, mm-hmm. it's... His mind is just so utterly, like, captivated by this house that it's everything that kind of 
his like Paranesi is the house and the house is kind of like Paranesi in this way because um he just knows everything to do with it. Well, not everything, but like a lot of things to do with this house. And the more that he explores it, the more that he adds to it, it kind of just fills him with this such glee and joy. It's just like, oh my gosh, let me show you this awesome thing I found in like the 47th vestibule along the third corridor down three yeah. flights of stairs. And the other's like, no. And he's like, okay, thank you. <laughs> cool. You know, it's, it's so funny because I was like, I was reading all this and like he was writing everything down, remembering all this shit. And I'm like, Listen, if that was me who was kidnapped, I would be dead within like the first week I was there. There was no, there was no absolute freaking way where I would remember anything there. I would be uh-huh. lost. My mind would unravel rather quickly, and I would just. It couldn't be. It couldn't be me. It couldn't be me. Mm-hmm. I just loved how he found like the beauty in like the simplest things, right? And his answers in certain mm-hmm. environments just just made sense. So much sense to him. And then when he got his shoes, he was like the happiest person in the world. And I yes! thought that was. Just, it was, everything about it was just so cute. And it I loved what he did with the bones. Like, he was like... Yeah, he was so respectful yeah. and everything. He wanted to take care of people. He wanted to make sure that they weren't alone. And even when um, the police officer comes... What's their name again? Who um, cares? When the police officer <laughs> comes and she's like, well, what do you mean you're able to talk to them? Like, what's happening? And he's like, oh, well, like, don't you give offerings to your dead? Like, don't you mm-hmm. also talk to them and take care of them? And I was just like, oh, not that oh. police officer. I thought you were yeah. talking about, like, the, the dead oh. people. Yeah. So when she's like, oh, what do you That's mean like, about yeah. these people? Oh, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, look, he's just taking care of everyone. And, like, even when he knows the flood is coming and he, like, has to make sure. And even when the flood happens and the other and he knows the other is dangerous, and he's still like, no, like, climb, him. climb, like, get in the boat, yeah. like, he's trying still, like, oh my god. It's just this kind of, like, innocence, in a way, and, like, purity, almost, that it kind of just, like, it. it's philosophical, almost, um, like Alias was saying, um, about, like, you know, how, like, nature versus nurture, and kind of like, if he grew, grows up in like the house environment, how does he, like, what what kind of person would he become? And it just it just turns out to be like someone like very like kind and respectful of like the place that he's growing up in. Um, and then obviously with interactions with Raphael, um, who was the police officer, I just found that to be kind of interesting as well because obviously there's a juxtaposition between the two of them but then also this relationship that's being built that um was very interesting to be explored as they kept interacting Mm -hmm. um i wish i could i I wanted to know more about her you know a little Mm. bit i wanted her character maybe expanded upon just a little bit because like she did explain how she got there but like other than that i didn't really know much about her other than the fact that she was a brave and courageous person and someone who uh, Piranesi admired. But mm-hmm. I wanted to know a little bit more like her, her backstory. How was she able to slip into the world so much um, more easily than you know, other people? And so um, speaking of the world, I just thought it was so interesting the way it was created and exist because of the ideas and the knowledge that was flowing out of the pre-existing one. And like the statues are all the products of you know such ideas and knowledge. And I thought that mm-hmm. was it was so beautiful like it's such a beautiful parallel i think and it was like really interesting how pierre nessie was like oh but this world you know is also beautiful too when you're like talking about it and like how this world was existing because of the first one mm-hmm. so kind of reminded me a little bit like of of narnia of how they got there a little bit mm-hmm. but oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, something I really loved was just that this was a book that I felt like really pushed that idea of like, to me, what happens next or what's going on in the real world, that kind of like fan fiction aspect. Like, usually my brain doesn't tap into like what other narratives could be happening because I'm just focused on our first one, like our main mm-hmm. one. But I was thinking like, what's going on like in the other world, like in the real world while he's doing this like what does the other go off to do like where is and also like where where is Paranesi physically is he just like in a room when he's exploring like I was thinking of that and like just especially with Raphael I was thinking about like how does she get here what's going on in her life what made her because usually when you're watching like a crime unfold you're also getting that perspective of the person solving the crime but unless you're you're only seeing it when 
Piranesi's is being saved. And so you mm -hmm. don't get that other side of it. And so it was, this was definitely a book that challenged me to think like, what, what is she doing in her life with these crimes that made her feel like she had to go after this and take a non-traditional route to get to the root of what's going on with this person mm -hmm. that's gone missing? Like she really didn't have to go that far into this like other universe to help. And I just thought it was beautiful. So did you guys like, what did you guys think like in like sort of like in the beginning the middle of the book like what was happening like if the world he was um he was in if it was real if it was mm -hmm. just part of a dream or if he was just like a sort of like a passenger because you know there were some subtle hints where um the case sticks are clues to like where he was from but mm -hmm. i don't know if you guys ever picked up on that or like mm -hmm. what you guys think on that i think on like a second reread i was able to pick up on the clues a lot better and so I was like, oh my gosh, why did I know it's not on the first like read and stuff? But I think when I was first reading it, there were like certain things where I was like, okay, maybe there's something here that can be explored. But I didn't know like what it was gonna lead into. I think this was one of the like one of the books where I just didn't really know much about what was going on until like everything was being handed to me, which mm -hmm. is is kind of rare in some cases, but also I really enjoyed that. Um yeah it just very much became a way of just yeah i don't know where i was leading with that but yeah it was just more so things were handed to me and i was like okay i'm just yeah. gonna see what i can do with that and yeah totally i feel like that was similar to me where i was just like okay we're in a la labyrinth we're in a fantasy world so this must be mm. real like i just was like this is just like this is the world we're in like i hadn't accepted that there was a real world like our world yes. and so once that started to kind of get hinted at like once the once he's finding the scraps of paper and he's putting things together and then he's seeing the writing then i was like oh maybe people are able to access this but that was also something that i feel like on a second time reading or just you know something that i'll always kind of wonder is just like how mm -hmm. do people get into it and leave it like how does Raphael get how do, how was she able to figure out how to leave and like have that control over escaping the labyrinth? And also the same with the other, like the fact that they were able to go in and out was really interesting to me. Whereas Paranesi just accepts that there's no way out because he's done all the, like to him, he's like, I already know where all the entrances and exits are. So he doesn't, mm -hmm. he's like, I'm just, this is where we are. There is nothing else. And so I want, I I'll always wonder how, <laughs> how do they get out? <laughs> so this was very interesting as well um that there was the hint of a real world uh, mm -hmm. outside of the world that we were mm -hmm. in and i thought that I, that was something i noticed on my second reread as well i was just like oh this little little shift this little little tidbit <laughs> yeah when it mentioned the dates i thought it took place in our world in our real world but like years in the future for whatever mm -hmm. reason because i thought mm -hmm. When he when they mentioned like oh 2012 and all those years i was like wait does this take place in the real world and if so like because of like the descriptions of where they're at and everything i thought maybe it took place after an apocalypse or something like somewhat dystopian so mm -hmm. cool um i think one thing i also wanted to touch on was a comment that was raised earlier um this one uh, about Paranesi making offerings to the dead and how, like, um, I'm about to go into whole uh, collective unconscious here. Um, but basically, the whole thing about how we kind of gravitate towards a belief system is kind of interesting because, like, if we believe in something that's greater than us, it kind of gives us a comfort in some way, depending on, like, what you, like, if that does give you comfort or not, depending. But I think for Paranesi, him revering the house as some kind of entity really gave him that comfort because it was kind of like, if the other isn't going to, like, be there for me, at least I know the house will be. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just kind of that strength that, like, kept him going because he's like, oh, the, like, literally he talks about how the beauty of the house is immeasurable, it's kindness infinite, and, like, how the house is going to be the thing that provides for him. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of this thing of, like, at the root of it all, we want something to believe in. And so for Piranesi, it was the house. Mm -hmm. I also liked at the end, like, you just see how much belief and how much love he has because Raphael's like, can I take you back to the real world? Like, you have a family, you have people waiting for you, and mm -hmm. he's just not. And, like, even, which I thought was so sweet, was just thinking, like, 
if I'm not here, then who's appreciating it? And I, I don't know. Yeah. That was so like mm -hmm. beautiful to me and so sad. Like it was like that weird, like if, if a tree falls and it, and it, and no one's around to hear it, does it even make a sound like that kind of thing? Like if he's not there exploring and, and appreciating, then it, the, the house isn't getting the appreciation that it deserves. So I thought that yeah. was really beautiful. Yeah. Um, I think sort of like, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I, it's fine. Oh, I would just mention, like, at the very end, too, like, it wasn't, <clears throat> I thought it would end in a way where he would never come back. Like, he wasn't able to. Like, he would regain his, like, full consciousness and memory as Matthew Rose Sorensen, but he still retained his other, like, identity as Piranesi, and that he was still able to access this, this place um, whenever he wanted to. And that not only did go there but he also went with like Raphael, Sarah and um James as well like he bringing him back to this place because you know he felt like he was missing a part of himself there so much I thought that was a really beautiful thing and that he was able to access the house whenever he could mm -hmm. and I really loved like the whole ending of it all with that with that quote the house mm -hmm. is um infinite like it's kind of immeasurable or something like that so it's a great <laughs> tattoo yeah measurable there you go Kind of infinite, yeah. Stamp it on my forehead. It's <laughs> starting to cool. <laughs> They're gonna be like, what the heck is, what do you mean by house? Like, are you talking about yourself? <laughs> 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 well, no, but um, yeah, like, I just thought the cover itself was like very fitting once everything like clicked together, once you like knew everything, the story, like the metaphors and the parallels that, you know, it all represented because mm -hmm. I literally thought we were going in with like sort of like a Greek mythology retelling. And there's some sort mm -hmm. there is some sort of like Greek aspects in here that were sort of um, brought up that I could see why. But other than that, I thought it was a great book that stood very well. And so like so unique, unlike almost every, anything I've ever read before. This book is the closest thing that um, it'll remind me to The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. Mm. Oh. Um, both of these books are very unique in that sense um with really great prose and characters and so if you guys are looking for something like a very similar book i was literally looking on reddit the other day i was like man after i finished it i wanted a new like recommendation by other people and actually there are a couple of books that i haven't never heard of before that people have recommended so i actually got that <clears throat> a couple of those on, on a Ooh. order so but starless sea was one of them, where a lot of people were recommending it, uh, akin to Piranesi. So if you guys have not yet read The Starless Sea, I think they mentioned like a couple of notable ones as well, but that was the one that mm -hmm. stuck with me because I was like, yes, highly, highly definitely recommend. I need to read that. I need to read it. I'm going to get to it eventually. Um, right. We're doing um, I think if anyone has any questions, they can pop them into the... Uh, live chat now um there is one that Haley um did ask Haley's just uh, popping off today literally <laughs> go off Haley. um even though he made it out of the house will he ever truly leave the house or is he trapped forever does he reconcile the house with the real world or is he stuck in the house um i i think in a po more positive light is that he he sees himself belonging to the house Therefore, he can come and go whenever. <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> yeah. So, I just think that um, he isn't per se stuck. Um, once after he leaves with Sarah and is able to, you know, sort of come back into the real world, mm -hmm. um, I guess in, in a way, it, it's like it's still accessible for him to come and go as he pleases, to appreciate sort of like the beauty um, of the house as a inhibitor, you know? So. Yeah, I agree. And I think that the fact that he can bring James and that he can bring, and that Sarah just knows how to access it and she goes there for mm -hmm. quiet and peace, but that she's also able to leave still. So she's able to kind of access it when it's needed and he's able to access it. I mean, cause again, that, that passage that I love so much when he's talking about like, how if he's not around to appreciate it, who will? The fact that he's able to get to it at a safe distance and come to appreciate it. And even when James is like, 
can we just stay? And he's like, no, we have to go now, but I'll bring you back whenever you mm-hmm. want. Like it was just so caring and he understands yeah. the power and the love of the house and he knows how important yeah. it is to him and James. But he also understands that they can't get lost in it again, I think is really beautiful. And it's just you know, like, such an optimistic ending. What? The quote I think you're looking for is page 228 because I, I bookmarked it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think, Haley, that your question is like, in a way, could also honestly be reverted back into our world. It's like, is he going to be stuck here? You know, is, 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 will he not be able to reconcile with, you know, everything that has happened with his disappearance in the real world? Yeah, not being able to go back to the house. But, unfor- but fortunately, he was able to. So all good. All good in my end. Okay. Um, I think for me, it's kind of like, instead of it be- him being like Paranassi or like Matthew, like, Sorensen um I think like now he's kind of having to deal with being both people at the same time so maybe like an amalgamation or combination of the two um because like uh Nikki says in this uh comment um at the end of the book he was seeing people walking by him the represented statues he remembered from the house so I feel like it's going to be a a situation where he's going to see things in the real world and be reminded of the house and then see things in the house and be reminded of the real world and like both are going to be very real parts of his world to him and so like obviously hopefully he'll be able to um go back whenever he wants to and i like that kind of ending for him because it's like he can he can either go one way or the other way but also remain like the middle so i want to meet piranesi i want him to take me to the house oh same but then i feel like we both get lost <laughs> no he would ha- he would either have to like write shit down or like take me by the hand and just leave me over because i will definitely get lost for sure but ugh, jealous um i there was one that, comment that Haley said which was this one um the fact that like we knew like Perinesi knew more about the house than us um and then at the end we end up knowing more about the real world than oh. Perinesi oh my gosh that Haley, that's beautiful Haley. <laughs> oh. Haley went in on this book yeah. like, <laughs> hello Kudos! Incredible. I mean, I, I think Haley. I think Haley did say that they wanted to teach this book someday, and I feel like oh, that's incredible. You know, incredible, incredible. Like I would be in that class. Really, <laughs> star of the show. <laughs> but no, I definitely feel like this is the irony. It was definitely written really well, and it kind of just like the flipping of it just only proves kind of how you know we may be like very knowledgeable in like one area but then the instance we're put into an unfamiliar place there's going to be someone that's yeah inevitably going to know more than us yeah so i thought that was well Haley asked another great question another one how did you all feel boom (laughs) yes i loved that they had such a loving relationship but i also loved that Raphael is saying, like, it's okay if you don't want to come back yet. You don't ever have to mm-hmm. come back yet. The other lied to you and tried to trick you, and I'm not going to do that, so I'm not going to make you do anything you don't want to do. It was just mm-hmm. like she was the guardian angel that Piranesi needed to help him not feel so lonely and le- anymore, but also feel validated in the love of the world he had instead of the other who even when like he would write about the other i'm like dude the other sucks how are you not saying <laughs> this like you're so nice right whereas rafael Raphael was just like so gentle with him and it was exactly mm-hmm. what he needed and he, she validated mm-hmm. him while also reminding him of another life that he's anchored to oh it was so Sweet. I had nothing to say. You you said everything all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> to my file. Yes. Oh, um, is there any other questions? Um, maybe this one. Do you think this was a fantasy novel about Paranassi being stuck in an actual like illusion of the house, or was it all simply the trauma response of that of everything that was going on in um? Matthew's mind. Hmm, interesting. I think for me, it was like both. Like it was an actual place, but then because of like the 
the traumatic of response of how he got there, he sort of went back into his shell, right? And and mm-hmm. so I think this childlike quality protected him, protected him from like, you know, all this. And I thought that was like, I thought that was really, really sweet and mm-hmm. at the same time really powerful and strong. And so I thought it was like both at the same time yes. to, to, this, to this question because yeah. it was, the house was both real and it, and it existed, but mm-hmm. also like, um, that he was actually kidnapped and he couldn't leave. He didn't know where he was, I think was, um, was really interesting as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't think I can accept that the house isn't real to Paranesi, you know, like sure. it is real to him. And like the fact that he can, that other people can access it, I think proves that it's something that's accessible and something wonderful for some people. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it has to be real. For my heart, it has to be real for Fair Enough. Yes, so. yes, it has to be real. <laughs> it has to be real, yeah. I, I think, yeah, I think even if it isn't, I feel yeah. like if it's real to Paranassi, then it's real to me. Yeah, me. exactly. So. 100%. Yeah. Um, any other questions? If any, if there are any, you see. Um... And then the first five pages, I was like, wait, do I need to keep track of all these numbers? Yeah, <laughs> that was exactly my problem. I was like, okay, I tried to do a reading vlog for this book. And then within the first 10 pages, I said, I literally filmed the clip where I was like, I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to refilm it. And then I just was like, I'm not doing this. I cannot do a reading vlog for this book. <laughs> so, I just thought I'm it was trying. so interesting because there are no chapters in this book there's it's broken up in parts and mm-hmm. uh, in journal entries mm-hmm. which i thought was like r- a really interesting aspect um in a way to format this book especially in the place that they're in so that we're all just learning about this place um uh, through almost like dif- a different perspective where it's all through his like journal entries ish in a way mm-hmm. actually they're all from his journal entries right so yeah yeah. It's also interesting because the journal entries are manipulated by whoever was tearing the pages out of them and like mm-hmm. whoever was like scribbling out the number of journal that he was on. So it was mm-hmm. like we thought we had this re- or he thought he had this reliable record and then we find that someone's been able to manipulate it. But then it's interesting because whoever was manipulating it only tore out certain sections, which they even left a trace of tearing out those sections. So they didn't do a good enough job of clearing out the debris of you know evidence you know so i thought i just it was cool it made him the most reliable narrator and yet he was unreliable to himself so it was like yeah. you couldn't you didn't know what you could trust you didn't know what was fact and i thought that was it was beautiful i mean it was one of those books where like there's some books that make you want to write because you're like wow i might have a story and then there's books like this where you're like i will let her literally never think of something that's creative i will i have nothing to say because of how clever this was and i just had such a by the end of it it felt like such an emotional journey and i had such a huge appreciation and i totally understand why it won the award <laughs> because of how yeah, great yeah. it was Damn. It's just a amazing book. And I think I'm really glad that we all enjoyed it so much. And also one final like thing to Haley, uh, the Nani reference on page 16. Yes. Um, <gasps> what? what? I, so, uh, I can read it out. Yes. Um, but what danger they could possibly be, I have never known. I dreamt of him once. He was standing in a snowy forest and speaking to a female child. Because he talk- um, Piranesi is talking about um, a fawn statue that he really likes. And basically oh, it looks dude. like Mr. Tumnus from what? The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. What? He actually dreamed something. Maybe it's like, in a way, he dreamed something that was real, that was part of a different world. Mm-hmm. Because it did, it did. I think mention in this book that there are different, you know, doorways and portals to like these different, you know, dimensions and worlds and mm-hmm. whatnot. And I think that was that's just really interesting. Wow, I mean, apparently it there's a lot of Narnia that. references in there as well. So I mean, Elias, your reference to like how this reminded you a lot of Narnia mm-hmm. holds some substance. Okay, <laughs> love to see it. Glad I picked something up. That's not. You're just like. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I guess 
thank you everyone for joining us for Paranassi by Susanna Clark. Um, before we depart today, we do have a few announcements. Uh, next book is The Phantom of the Opera by an author who I cannot remember the name of. Um, on the road. Yes, yeah. That was a terrible, I don't, <laughs> maybe I need to pronounce it correctly. There we go. Gaston Lourou. Thank Ooh. you. Come on, Brett. <laughs> oh, um, wow, you... your copy. It's cool, it's right? Interesting. It is. It is so like, gorgeous. Black and white. Oh my gosh. I need Ooh. to. I need to find that copy and or or a different or or a different copy. I will see. Uh, All three of but... us. Okay. <laughs> With different editions. <laughs> um, uh, we will be hosting a twenty-four hour readathon for the Phantom of the Opera. Date TBC, but it will be somewhere in June, but we'll be host putting all the information in our Discord, which I believe the link to is in the description. If not, it will be edited to include the description, but yes. Um, but be sure to join the Discord. It's a great place. Everyone's really nice and lovely and great conversations all the time. Um, and then the next bit of information is July, August and September picks. They'll be posted in the next week or two on Instagram and also the Discord as well. But for September, we're going to be doing another kind of like you pick the book that we read. A um, yeah. Yes, a poll. Well, English is not my forte today. <laughs> um, yes, we'll be doing another poll of, um, I think, five books. And then the book that wins uh, will be uh, having for the September uh live show once again because it's our second year anniversary of the late night book club which that's insane yeah how long will they keep us up you guys <laughs> <laughs> we shall see um it, oh, it's just been a lot of fun and also a special congratulations to elias yes for reaching 100k come on 100 <laughs> hey! thank woo, you woo, 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 woo. you're 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 almost there too joel you're oh, on your way oh, joel, come on. <laughs> It's so it's so surreal. But next um, month we'll celebrate you. Hey, <laughs> no, <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. Um, but yeah, Thank I you. think that's everything. Um, but if you have any uh, suggestions for books you want to have in the poll for mm -hmm. September, uh, either leave them in the comment section now or um, put them in the Discord. So then I don't know where exactly. Probably just in. I'll have a question of the day maybe, put up. Maybe question of the day yeah. or yeah. Yeah. question of the day. Come I will on. make a question of the day and you can put all of your suggestions in there. Um, but yeah, so I guess until the next time on, uh, I think it's Noelle's channel next month, The Phantom. And on um, the opera. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, everyone. So, <laughs> okay. And we shall see you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Uh...